Programming a bubble sort is something that's quite nice to actually see because you get to see um, a real algorithm actually play out in your Python code. So it's a good one to use to practice your computational thinking skills. So if I've got a list, so my list, and it's just got a few items in it, you just want to start really small with a really simple list that needs to be sorted there. Now, if I was going to do this just with pen and paper, a bubble sort works by going left to right. One look through is called a pass. And what it does is it looks for pairs. It checks to see if that value is larger than that value. And if it is, then it does a swap. So in this situation, we know that four is bigger than one. So the list would become one, four, two, three. And then we look at the next two items. So we've gone to one and two. Now we look at two and three. So yes, they need to be swapped because four is larger than two. So this becomes one, two, four, three. And then the next one, we're looking at position three and four. And yep, they need to be swapped. So it becomes one, two, three, four. So just in one pass, in one look through the entire list, we have solved it. it, it is sorted. So that's just a good section of numbers for us to use to get us started with our Python code. So that's roughly how it works, but now we've got to figure out well, what, what would the actual algorithm be. And it's good to just start small. So first of all, how do you just get one number to swap with another number when you've got a list? So if we have a look, we've got four, one, two, three. In Python, we know that this position is zero, one, two, three. And we know that to find that value and to find that value, it would be my list and then the square brackets and my list and the square brackets. So that would find those two positions. Then to check whether one is bigger than the other, we would use the greater than symbol. This would all be one line of code. So we're looking for something like, if that is greater than that, then we wanna swap them around. So let's just see if we can try doing that in Python. Let's just see if we can get it to work. So we've got my list. We're going to put in it four, one, two, three, and then what we want to do is we want to say if my list zero is greater than my list one, then we want to swap them. So how do you actually swap the numbers? Now, if I did this, my list zero equals my list one and then I did the opposite what oops just swap that for a one and swap that for a zero can you spot the error that is going to happen when I print my list let's just take a look so it's gone one, one, two, three. So instead of swapping them round, what it's done is we've now got a one in the first one, which is what we wanted, but we've also got a one in the second one, which is what we didn't want. So what's happening there is it's putting um, whatever was stored in this location into zero. And now because this is a one, it's it's because this is a one, it's now putting a one in there as well. So we've got to find a way of temporarily putting these values somewhere else. So it's good to just use a and then B 
and let's see what happens. Oops, we don't want that. <laughs> now we've got to actually swap them. So this one needs to be a B and this one needs to be an A. So let's just see what happens now. Okay, and four has started to move up the list. So we should know that with a bubble sort, the largest value in the list will bubble all the way to the end. So in one complete pass, this four should make it to the end of the list. So we've done it for one. So let's use our computational thinking skills now to try and do it for two. Now, the most obvious and simple way would be to do this and then change that to a one, change that to a two, one, one, two, two. Let's see what happens. Oops, now I've put a three, two, two. Let's see what happens. Okay, so has it worked? The four is moving up. And then if I copy that again and I paste it again and I just change this to a two, Three, two, three, two, three. Oops. What happens now? Ah, so the list is now sorted. So we've made one complete pass along this list and it's taken us three checks of the pairs. So how can I now simplify this further? What can I do to put this into one block of code? So to do this I've got to look at what is actually changing because all I needed to do there was copy and paste all of that and I only had to change the numbers I only had to change the numbers that are in here so if you're using your computational thinking skills you should be thinking right okay I should actually be able to put variables in here instead of the actual numbers so let's just stick an X for the Z for the X for the zero and a Y for the one now I know because I've done it that this is going to take three iterations in order for it to complete the first pass so I could just use a for loop now so 4x in range, 0 to 3. Now x is already there and we can use that value of x here. So x, when it first starts, is going to be a 0, which is the same as that location there, 0, which is the first location that we want. So if we look here, my list x will be my list 0. But what's the relationship between X and Y? Let's just go back to our drawing board and figure this out. Right then, so we've got our list and we've got in it four, one, two, three. We know that this is zero, one, two, three with their locations and we First of all, we looked at location zero, and then we looked at location one. And then we have changed those values to X and Y. So X is a simple one because X just needs to go zero, one, two. And then Y, the next one up, goes 1, 2, 3. Because we're looking at this one and this one, 0 and 1. Then we're looking at 1 and 2. Then we're looking at 2 and 3. So what you've got to do now is you've got to look, well, what's the pattern between these two numbers here? So 0 and 1, 1 and 2, 2 and 3. And the pattern is that we are adding 1 each time. So if we are adding 1 each time to x, to get y, what can we do in our code to add 1 to x and that equal y? Let's have a go. So I've already got my x, I don't need my x anymore. 
but I do need to assign something to Y. So if I do that, let's see what happens. Awesome. So it's done exactly the same thing as it did before, but now in much less lines of code. So that just does one pass. What if now I add another value? In fact, I'm going to add zero. What does it do? Okay, so straight away it hasn't got to the end, so we're very stuck here. So now we've got to think, well, what can I do to that number three so that instead of looking at number three all the time, can I use a variable that looks at the list, uh, uh, the length of the array instead of having a number there? So what I can do is I can use len of my list and let's just see what happens when I do this. It's not worked, okay? So why hasn't it worked? List index out of range because what it's doing, let's just go back. The length of my array is one, two, three, four, five. But when I'm looking through this list, it starts at zero, one, two, three, four. So it goes out of range. So to make it within that range, I can just stick minus one on the end there. And now, fingers crossed, should do it. Yeah, so now our four has gone all the way to the end of the list. Let's just see what happens when I put some more values in there. Oops, not the four. Does it still do it? Yeah, the four's made it to the end. So you can see actually now that with the bubble sort, you can see what's happening there. That four is moving all the way to the end. And that is still one pass. So this is where it gets a little bit trickier. So we've got this and this will do one pass for any list now. So I can put any amount of numbers in here and it will do one pass. So let's just do that. Yep, the highest number has made it to the end. So we know our one pass is working. So how do I get it to do it now for all the passes that are necessary to solve the problem? So I could just keep copying and pasting that if I wanted to. But what I can do is I can think about a way to run this while something is true. So we're going back now to thinking about a while loop. So if I had a while loop, while um, there are swaps left, run my for loop. Okay, so I've got to think of what needs to be true in order for swaps left to run. So I've got my array. Okay, so what needs to be true in order for my while loop to keep, to keep running? Well, there's your clue while there are swaps left. So how am I gonna keep track of if there are any actual, actual swaps left? So I could have a counter. Um, I could have a Boolean variable to store true and false. So what's gonna be the best? I think I'm gonna go for a counter and I'm gonna count each time there is a swap. And if the swaps or the counter is zero, then the loop is gonna break. I think I'm gonna go for that one. So swaps left would be count is more than zero. And I'm also gonna need count equals zero there. Okay, so let's try this out in Python. Let's see what happens. So I wanted a count equals zero. 
and a swaps left equals count more than zero. I'm going to have to have that as one, aren't I, for the first time, or else it's not going to run. And then I want to put in a while loop here, so I'm going to put while swaps left. And then I just need to tab all of this forward, so I highlight it all, press the tab key, and it tabs it all in. And then I just need to figure out where to put my count. So how, where do I need to count when a swap has happened? So if I look at this code here, this is checking if a swap is necessary, and if it is, then it's carrying out the swap. So if I put my little counter in here, then that's only going to count when a swap has actually occurred. Now, am I going to need to put count equals zero in there? Let's just see what happens at this point. Is it going to do it? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Runtime error. Okay, so that's happened because I haven't run this again. So I need this block of code in there somewhere. Let's just put it there for now. Let's just see if that does anything. Nope, still not working. So let's use our thinking skills here to figure out what it is. And I'm sure it's something to do with this. So we set count to one. So this is running. We're adding one if it's true. Yeah, we need to set count to zero again at some point before this runs. So actually, could I try that? Yeah, is it sorted? Zero, one, two, two, three, three, four, 23, 23, 45. Okay, so it's done it, but there's a lot of uh, movement going on there. Let's try some other values. Just to test it. Yep, brilliant. So we've carried out our bubble sort now. Could probably be a little bit more efficient than this, but that that's a pretty that's pretty good going there for a first try. So why don't you have a go?